This is the first of the maple type species that we're going to look at. This is sycamore, quite a familiar part of the UK landscape now. Strictly speaking, not native, but naturalised and because of its very successful pioneering and colonising habit, it's pretty much everywhere. Uh, all of the maples or maple types have opposite buds. And you can see these pairs of buds as you work up and down the stem. Later in the season, when they start to produce seeds as well, they'll have very distinctive paired winged seeds, the helicopters that a lot of people are familiar with. But again, it's a bit early at this time of year to see those. How can we identify sycamore? Well, quite straightforward really. Um, it's got this maple type leaf, broad, open, palmate leaf. And one of the easiest ways to identify sycamore at this time of year, as we approach the end of the summer, you'll just see a small black spot on there. That's a thing called tar spot. Now tar spot tends to be very strongly associated with sycamore. There's another one here. And it's uh, early yet in the season. Later on in the season, as we move into the early autumn, that tar spot will actually get stronger and stronger. And you'll see leaves with 10, 20, 30 different black spots on like that doesn't kill the tree, doesn't cause it any stress, it's just symptomatic of sycamore um, uh, at the end of the growing season effectively. So if you see something with black spots on and it's got that palmate maple type leaf shape, it's almost certainly going to be sycamore. It's quite a nice easy way to identify it. Sycamore Other ways to, to have, identify sycamore, uh, a love distinctive red blush a people. on the stalks. Hate it, um, see it as a problem. As I said already, all of the maple species, including it does sycamore, produce seed early and it does almost colonize maple, quite actively. Uh, botanically, it likes have these change in landscape and it will uh, come in paired and fill gaps in opposite very, buds very as you work up and down. So the some step. people see that as a threat, as a problem to biodiversity. And I think if you do have classic ancient semi-natural woodland conditions uh, and sycamore starts to get in and colonize, then you can clearly compromise ground flora and hence. Uh, further biodiversity. But there's another side to the story with sycamore. It's quick, it's fast growing, its timber can be very high value if it's grown well and grown into clean straight stems. Um, it is vulnerable like some other species to damage from grey squirrel because it has relatively thin bark when it's young but if you can keep it moving fast in silvicultural terms, grow it fast, protect it from grey squirrels, the timber can be very very valuable indeed. So there's two sides to the story when it comes to sycamore. Another positive aspect of sycamore is it stands exposure very well. That means it will function, it will survive, it will grow, it will give shelter to very exposed locations. So if you're on the side of a hillside, perhaps in Cumbria, somewhere like that, uh, and you want to shelter stock or farm buildings, something like sycamore will fit the bill and do a very good, very robust job. Equally, it's tolerant to salt and salt spray, so in coastal locations where you need shelter and cover, sycamore can work there. So functionally, it has some very good positive attributes. The timber can be extremely valuable. It does have this um, question mark over it in terms of overall biodiversity. But as we find out more and more about sycamore, um, we're starting to see it as quite a valuable addition to parkland landscapes, where it seems to have very good properties in terms of lichen habitats. So it's not a simple story with sycamore. It's not necessarily a marmite tree. Maybe we need to know a bit more about it before we uh, uh, move to judgment.